Hey everybody, today we're going to talk about grounding techniques and how to use them. But before we jump into this topic, are you new to my channel? Welcome! I release videos on Mondays and on Thursdays, so make sure you're subscribed and have your notifications turned on so that you don't miss out. Now as always, let's start by defining grounding. I know I mention it all the time, but I don't actually know if I've ever taken the time to define it. So grounding is a technique that helps keep someone in the present instead of dissociating, spacing out, or shutting down. These techniques can help reorient a person to the here and now and in reality. Grounding skills can be helpful in managing overwhelming feelings or intense anxiety. And I created a video about grounding techniques with Alexa a while back, so I'll also link that in the description if you wanna learn more. The most common grounding techniques I've talked about are snapping rubber bands on your arm, using fidget toys, and counting colors. But those don't work for everyone. And I know that many of you have said that you have a history of self-injury and snapping rubber bands can lead to those to more urges to self-harm. Also, fidget toys don't work for everybody and counting colors can help once, but then, then what do we do? Well, thanks to fellow Kenyan Sarah, who got some help from her therapist, Rebecca, and her clinical pain coordinator, Jenny, she shared some more ideas that will hopefully help you stay present and grounded when you need to. And also, just because I think it's important to mention, we do need to be grounded and present whenever we're doing trauma work. Otherwise, it's like our brain is on a mini vacation and it isn't given the chance to reprocess anything. So all the work that we may be trying to do in therapy or EMDR just isn't really helping. And it's kind of a waste of time and money. And that's why these techniques are important and helpful. Oh, and it's also important that you do all of these while practicing your yoga breathing. If you haven't done yoga, this really just means that you breathe in for three to four seconds, hold it at the top and breathe out for four to five seconds and then pause and do it again. It's kind of breaking our breathing into chunks versus just mindlessly breathing in and out. And yoga breathing helps us to calm our system down and focus our energy into our breath, kind of like meditation, right? And how the breath moves through our body, paying attention to that can be really important. And you should also keep your eyes closed while you do these or at least, you know, softly gaze somewhere. And last, leave your judgment at the door. There is no room for judgment about how well these work for you or how many you're able to complete. All you have to do is try. Okay, now let's get into them. Number one, clapping our hands so that you can feel the sensation of that clap as it moves through your fingertips into your fingers, hands, arms, down your back, etc. Notice the tingling sensation this creates and even pay attention to how long it lasts. Like, how long do you feel it as your eyes are closed and you're experiencing this sensation? And wait to open your eyes until it's all gone. So all those tingles that you maybe felt aren't there anymore. This can keep you in the here and now. And by initiating this intense sensation, right? Clapping, we could clap pretty hard. Hopefully it can pull you back out of a potential flashback, dissociation, or urge to shut down. Number two, stomping your feet and feeling that sensation again like in your hands, you're going through your tips of your toes, all the way through your toes into your feet, your legs, your back, however it moves through your body. I know certain areas in our body can be easier to focus on than others, so picking one that, you know, isn't so emotionally charged or even attached to your self-injury if you struggle with that is best. And just like the clapping option, make sure you wait until the sensation is left to notice where that tingly feeling traveled in your body and then open your eyes. Number three, rubbing your hands together. I know this sounds kind of weird, but you can feel the warmth that builds up between them as you rub them together and feel the heat move from your hands. Maybe it goes up your arms. Maybe even, you know, as your hands are all warmed up, you place them on your legs or your arms and you feel that heat sensation move through you. And again, just like the others, wait until it's completely gone to regain your focus by opening your eyes and looking back, you know, at your therapist or whatever it is you were working on. Number four, using a worry stone or silly putty to move around in your hand. Close your eyes and feel its temperature, texture, and its firmness. You may want to keep these things with you when you're going to therapy or going into some situation that may be stressful. You can play with it in your pocket and it can help keep you present and more calm while you go about your day. Remember though, you need to focus your energy onto that one object and try to take mental notes about how it feels, what you feel in your body when you touch it, and all stuff like that. That's what makes it a grounding technique. Number five, we're gonna use your sense of smell. Essential oils can help with this a lot. You can keep them in a rollerball applicator. You can buy these, um, I've seen them online on Amazon or any health food store. I've seen them even at Whole Foods or have an oil diffuser going in your home or when you're in therapy. Smells like citrus, lavender, jasmine, peppermint, and cinnamon 
there's a lot of them, are all known to help us focus. So keeping these scents with you and closing your eyes while you smell it, maybe notice how it makes you feel. Is it a strong smell? Does it remind you of a calming place or perhaps a happy memory? Pay attention to that scent and notice how long you can smell it even though you maybe have already put the oil away. Just like we'd wait to open our eyes until that tingly sensation from clapping or stomping goes away, do the same with the oil. Wait until that scent is completely gone before we open our eyes and re-engage. Six, we're gonna utilize our sense of taste. Now I know this can be harder for those of us who struggle with eating disorders, but that's why it's important to find grounding techniques that help you most and work for you specifically. So for sense of taste, you can keep peppermints with you, ginger chews or tea, or even gum. Notice the texture and the taste. Does it tingle on your tongue? Pay attention to how long you taste it. Is it spicy, salty, sweet? Does it bring up fond memories? Does it make you salivate? I know this can sound really weird, but we have to pay attention to all of these things and hopefully by doing that, it'll bring us back to the present. And the seventh and final option I'm gonna talk about goes back to our sense of touch. And this is creating a sensory bowl. You can place various items into it, think like sand or marbles, different shapes and sizes of beads, raw pasta shells, fidget toys, coins, you name it. Whatever has a different texture, temperature, et cetera, because you know how metals can be a little colder than things that aren't metal? Just throwing that out there. You can add it in there and use it to keep you grounded. I've had clients who keep theirs in Tupperware containers, so they put the lid on it and they bring it with them to therapy or on vacation or wherever they need it. So make sure that yours can travel with you or have a travel one and then one that stays at home or at your therapist's office. Those can be really, really helpful to have different textures and things you can just feel around in when you're really struggling to stay present. And again, just remember that staying grounded and present is vital to our recovery from trauma and can even help us better manage our anxiety or any overwhelming feeling. This video has been brought to you by the Kenyans on Patreon. If you would like to support the creation of these mental health videos, click the link in the description and check it out. And I hope these grounding techniques can help you better manage what you may be going through. But as always, what do you do to stay grounded? Are there other tools and techniques I didn't mention? Please share those in the comments down below and I will see you next time. Bye.